Hey there, I'm Miss Jamie OT. I'm a school-based occupational therapist with 22 years of experience working with elementary and high school age children. One of my passions in therapy is working on children's visual efficiency skills. So this is different than whether or not a child needs glasses. A lot of times a parent will say to me, oh, well, no, I took them, the pediatrician, look, they don't need glasses. It's really not about whether or not they need glasses. It's about how their eye muscles are moving. And one thing I like to say is that eyes are just like elbows. We need to make sure that they're able to move properly in order to do their job. So it's not just about whether or not they can see, but are their eyes working properly so they can process what they're seeing correctly. So I'm going to talk today a little bit about how to assess ocular motor skills. And there are different kinds of ocular motor skills. Today, this video is going to specifically be about how to assess the nine points of cardinal gaze. So I like to think of a tic-tac-toe board um, you know, we have the, the nine spots. And when I'm assessing a child's ocular motor skills, I think of the tic-tac-toe board. And that helps me to make sure that I don't miss any area. So today's video is just one of four different videos that I've done about visual assessments that are appropriate to do in a school setting. This is an informal assessment. It's not standardized. It's just something that you do and you use your clinical observation skills to see how the child's eyes are working. So let's get started. Here's the nine points of cardinal gaze. Again, think of the tic-tac-toe board. We want to hit each one of those nine spots when we're looking at the child's eyes. This is my niece, Finn. Isn't she a cutie pie? She volunteered for this, thank goodness. And I was able to get a good picture of her eyes in each of the nine positions. So when we start out, we're going to be looking, and of course, it doesn't matter what order you do this in, but you want to make sure you hit each of the nine spots in any order. So my first picture here is of Finn looking straight up. So I like to use either my finger or I have a popsicle stick or maybe a pencil with a cool eraser on it, and I have the child track my visual stimulus, whatever it is, and I tell them to keep their eyes on the eraser or on the popsicle stick. I'm looking at her eyes going straight up, then straight down. Now you'll see she's holding her eyes here, so it looks a little silly, but this is because sometimes, particularly for a picture, it's hard to see the child's eyeballs and how they're moving because if they're looking down, their eyelids automatically kind of close. So it can be hard to see. So you can either ask the child to kind of hold their eyebrows up a little bit, or you could do it depending on how comfortable you are with the child or how well you know them. I like to have the child come back to the center in between across and up and down. As I'm changing directions, I have them stop in the middle. So I can see again, how do their eyes adjust to that midline position? Then you're gonna have the child look straight across in a horizontal manner. Doesn't matter which direction first, but you wanna ask them to look and you want them to look all the way. And you're noticing to see, is their head moving with their eyes or are just their eyes going? Depending on their age, some sometimes it's normal for the child's head to move, but not always. By the time a child is in about third grade, we want them to be able to disassociate their eye movements from their head movements. So that means they should be able to move their eyes smoothly without having to move their whole head or their whole body. You're gonna go back to the other side, back to the center, and then we're gonna actually go in an X. So we did the, the T of the tic-tac-toe board. Now we're going to do the crisscross diagonals. So she's looking straight up in the corner, then straight down in the corner, and then we do the other side. I like to stop at the center again in between. Perfect. So then we're able to see, are the child's eyes working together smoothly? You may see the child blinking. They may start to um, tilt their head a little bit or, or talk about how it might hurt or it's uncomfortable. They may be awfully giggly. You're also noticing to see, can they keep their eye on that stimulus? It's important that they're able to maintain visual focus because that's what they're doing all day in the classroom. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. This is just one tiny little aspect of ocular motor skills that I always look at when I'm assessing a child. It is important that we look at a child's eyes. It's part of their whole body. And according to IDEA, occupational therapy practitioners work on ocular motor 
skills because it is a part of visual functioning. This is a part of my Vision 101 School-Based Occupational Therapy Practitioner course, which I am so proud of and so passionate about. We are open right now. We're open only twice a year, and we are open right now. So if you're interested in learning more about Vision 101, or if you're catching this video at a different time, and you're interested in going to the course the next time we're open, you can get on the wait list at MissJamieOT.com slash V101. One of the reasons that I really am passionate about this course is because I felt like I didn't have the training that I needed in regards to children's visual skills. I wasn't exactly sure what I was doing. I didn't feel super confident. And when I started training with my friend, Robert Constantine, I felt so much better. And he was really like a mentor to me. It wasn't that I just took the class and that was it and was on my own. I was able to ask him questions. And when we designed our Vision 101, course, we made sure that this was an important part of our course. So here's one testimonial from a person who took our course. She's asking a question. You can see she's saying, thank you. This course was one of the most helpful I've ever taken. But she's saying, when I tested him, he did this. And then the second time he did this, what should I do to address his visual skills? Very often as therapists, we don't just take a course and then feel completely confident and confident in it. It's important, especially in a skill that we don't have a lot of training in, that we have a mentor to ask questions to. So in our Vision 101 course, we have we grant access to a Facebook group where we mentor you, and I say we, I mean myself and my friend Robert Constantine, our vision extraordinaire. He's available for contact at Vision Rehab OT. He's got his own Facebook page and blog and he's just such a wonderful guy to work with and I've learned so much from him. And he is available in our Vision 101 Facebook groups to mentor you, answer your questions, follow up. Here's another testimonial from someone who took our course. I'm shocked at how many kids I'm sending to an OD and they're needing glasses. So grateful for this class. So this person's actually saying, I have a report on one of my students from an optometrist, but I'm not exactly sure how to read it or what it means. Can we go over this? And this was one of the videos. We are get great ideas from our Vision 101 students. This person gave us an idea to go over a vision report and we did a live session in the Facebook group to go over a vision report. And Robert explained exactly what some of the abbreviations and the medical terms that we weren't 100% familiar with, what they meant. So we continue to learn and help each other and guide each other. Robert is the vision expert and I'm the school-based OT expert. And it's just a, a perfect match in my opinion. And we've been able to learn with each other. The cohort is open for six months. So when I say the, the Vision 101 is open, what we do is we open the doors for a week and the people who purchase the course are now a cohort. And they're going to be in the Facebook group together and taking the course on their own at their own pace for the next six months. But we're going to be going through this material together, answering questions. We also do fun contests where we raffle off vision toys. We raffle off vision assessments and we go over how to use vision assessments. We've had lots of fun in our past cohorts and I suspect that we're always going to because Robert and I just love vision and we have so much going so much fun going over it with our students. So this is my pal, Robert. He is showing us how to use a Brock string, which is a very, very cheap but effective visual tracking tool that we talk about in our vision activities thread in our Facebook group. Just one of the many fun things that we do. So again, if you're interested in finding out more about Vision 101, check out this link, MissJamieOT.com slash V101. And don't forget, when you're working with those kiddos, you've got to check their ocular motor skills. I hope this video made you feel a little more confident in what to do. If you want to learn more, then join us in the cohort. Thank you so much for watching my video. I've got more videos about vision on my YouTube channel and also on my blog, so you can check those out as well. I'm here to help you learn and to help you be the best occupational therapy practitioner that you can be. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Talk to you soon.